I've looked at the history of the Civil War through a young man's eyes. And I've looked at the history of the Civil War through an older man's eyes. It looks different from those two perspectives. As a young man, my view of the war was so simplistic in nature that anyone of sound mind, it would seem, would come to the same conclusions. The North, my homeland, was gloriously victorious over the South in a clash of wills, with the prize being men's freedom. Virtue triumphed over darkness as Sherman raised his path to the sea. Goodness won the day, even as men were slaughtered in fields and woods and pastures from Pennsylvania to Georgia for a cause worth dying for. As a young man, I laid a small claim to this victory with an unwarranted sense of pride. My home, my north, had won the day. The war and its cause, after all, were black and white, and in the end the south had no room for boasting. They were the vanquished their lingering romantic notion that there was some trace of goodness in their efforts or nobility in their struggles against the invading Yankees were misguided and ignorant. The South had no room for pride, and my pride would give theirs no quarter. I could not fathom why they held such a tight grip on their Southern identity, lifting it up and showing it off in bronze monuments to dead war heroes, or by clinging to their Confederate flag like a graven idol. While soldiers are sent to war by politicians and governments, they fight for their homeland. In the Civil War, many, perhaps most Southern men, died not for states' rights or to defend the rights of rich slave owners, but for the people they loved and the land that was home. It was more a matter of birth than of choice, for such is a soldier's burden. These men fought bravely under the leadership of the likes of Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee, men of faith who struggled mightily with the diverse issues of the war, but chose to fight for the land and the people that they loved. As an older man, I still believe the South was on the wrong side of righteousness, and that was their undoing. Slavery was like rot to an apple. It could not continue to exist in a nation whose declaration of independence claimed that all men are created equal. Yet today, many of us cringe when we see monuments to men like Robert E. Lee or Confederate soldiers who fought so valiantly, torn down by inflamed mobs or whisked away from the public squares in the dead of night. I don't loathe these activists for their idealism, but rather their misguided attempt to erase the past, for they will never change what was. But what should we actually see when looking at the monument of a rebel soldier? It's a hard question. Perhaps the answer is to appreciate the struggles he endured, both seen and hidden, from the war he waged on the battlefield to the one he fought in the privacy of his heart. One Confederate soldier wrote, What a cruel thing war is, to fill our hearts with hatred instead of love for our neighbors. That man was Robert E. Lee. It seems there's a thing or two we still need to learn from the war that pitted one American against another all these years later even as some try to remove it from history. To God be the glory.